Good morning, it's a Daily Quiz, episode 45, and I'm John Newquist. It's Process Safety Management. Uh, we separated this out separately because we're starting to see the CSPs get two, three, four process safety management questions. It is November 20th, and this is in the OSHT, CSP, and ASP test. A chemical plant is using a flammable solvent in quantities above OSHA's threshold. During a PHA, process hazard analysis meeting, the team identifies a scenario where a transfer pump could overheat and ignite vapors if cooling water flow is interrupted. The facilitator documents the scenario but decides no follow-up action are needed. What's the mo most appropriate next step under PSM requirements? A, no further action is needed since the hazard was identified. B, perform an annual refresher training on pump operations. C, conduct the management chain review for all pumps on site. D, recommendation, development recommendations and assign corrective action to reduce the identified risk. And because they put in the MOC, most people are going to pick that because if you don't know PSM. But you're going to develop recommendations. you got a hazard, so some fundamental. Identify the hazard, develop recommendations, assign corrective actions to reduce the identified risk. Okay. Why would a pump overheat? Well, you know, if it doesn't get lubricated, uh, anything rotating is going to overheat. Number two, an operator or blending unit relies on tribal knowledge because written operating procedures were never updated after recipe modification. During startup, an operator adds an ingredient too early, causing a runaway reaction that triggers the pressure relief system. Which PSM element was most strictly violated? A. Mechanical integrity. B. Operating procedures. C. Contract management. D. Incident investigation. This could be a tricky one. But they're looking for operating procedures because they emphasize that in there. Yes, why did the um, pressure relief go? Well, because it got overpressured. Did the system have a method to prevent overfilling? No. And, and, and that's the trouble when you had to add mental ingredients to a process. You had too much. Uh, several explosions like a uh, case in uh, Bell Pre, Ohio, back in 1990-ish, where the reaction was too fast and could handle the increase in pressure. Number three, mechanical integrity scenario. It's uh, facility stores chlorine under pressure. During the inspection, a technician finds corrosion on a pipe bevel but defers repair because production is behind schedule. A week later, the elbow fails, causing a hazardous release. Which PSM principles would have prevented this incident? Uh, this is very basic. Using contractors trained in hazard communication, implementing a behavior safe based safety observation program. C, updating the emergency action plan annually. D, following the mechanical integrity program inspection and repair requirements. This is easy. There's only one good answer in this one, and it is D. All right, we're going to cover a little bit more on PSM. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, the PSM started, if I had to pick a case, and you know, you can go back to Lamont, 1983, with Philip 66 blowing up and killing multiple people. Uh, but this one was the one I think I remember. I was in September working on a case at Quantum that killed two and had 16 in a, a process safety explosion. This was in Pasadena, Texas, you know, killed 23. These are tough inspections to do. I was at Quantum for six months and then back more other times for other issues. Uh, the overhead line leaked due to corrosion. Again, you're going to have to monitor under PSM the corrosion that occurs at certain points and that's based on your history and industry practice. PSM, when I worked at the OSHA training institute, I had to create a two-week class on it. And then after two weeks, people said it was, I, I don't know enough about it. So we made a four-week class. So the OSHA people who do process safety management take a four-week class to learn it. So me covering it just in a few minutes is, is going to be uh, just an intro. So, Secretary of Labor back then was Elizabeth Dole. Her husband was Bob Dole, the Senate Majority Reason. We had Phillips blow up, Sitco, Arco, and other explosions. She would go to these disasters and talk to the family, and 
and she would she just didn't understand how this industry could be so big and have so many explosions and deaths and Congress through her husband ordered OSHA to develop a PSM standard and that's how it goes so PSM was created by OSHA I mean by Congress to tell OSHA to make a standard they asked essentially you know all these companies what do you do that's good that works and made it law and I remember when they had my management to change citation under the general duty clause they actually used that because I could show they fixed it afterwards and that's why we have a management of chain stench. It's a holistic approach, you know, and it looks at a lot of different elements. So, 13 elements, as I call it, uh, some of the things very unique management of change, hot works, process safety, startup review, uh, dealing with contractor safety, very important area. Um, do you have the process safety information? You know, all the diagrams, flows, everything going to do a process hazard analysis, you know, safety analysis for every piece of equipment that's out there using guide words. Mechanical integrities, pumps, compressors, what do you do to make sure that these things are going to go through it? Today it's easy, you just follow the manuals of these pumps and compressors. Incident investigation, the first time OSHA ever put in an incident investigation. Emergency planning and response, and then auditing every three years. So it was for areas that is toxic, combustibles. I just tell people 95, 97% of all PSM is, is uh, flammables are in the process over 10,000 uh, pounds or 10,000 pounds of ammonia like refrigerated warehouse or food facilities. And there may be 5,000 pounds of chlorine. There's, there's a list of chemicals, but that's it for PSM. I will see you tomorrow.